morning, Cove Kids. We're going to sing a song. Good morning, God. Ready? Here we go. Good morning, God. This is your day. I am your child. Show me your way. Good morning, God. This is your day. I am your child. Show me your way. And now we're going to hear from Miss Carly. Thank you for singing, puppets. That was super fun. I'm glad to have you join me today. I have a lesson I want to teach you from John 17. This is about six things that Jesus wants. How do I know what Jesus wants? Well, the Bible tells us. In John 17, there is a prayer that Jesus prayed for his followers, the one who would follow the way he showed us children of God. And that's you and me when we've given our heart to him. And so I want to tell you from this prayer, six things that Jesus wants. Are you ready? I've got some items here that are going to help me teach you about this. I've got an Etch-a-Sketch, a glove. I've got some ear protection, a flashlight, bubbles, and a crown. So let's go together and let's go one by one. They all tell us about something that Jesus wants. The first one is the Etch-a-Sketch. Now you know how an Etch-a-Sketch is. You can turn these little knobs and write a picture on here. And I've already put a picture and a word on my Etch-a-Sketch and I want to show it to you. My Etch-a-Sketch says sin. Oh dear, and look down at the bottom, it's all messy. Yeah, sin, sin ruins everything. And we can try as hard as we want to wipe away that sin, to make it go, look, no matter how hard I rub, I can't take that sin stain away. But Jesus, he wants to clean your heart. That's the first thing Jesus wants. It says in John 17 2, I've come to give eternal life to all whom you have given me. That's us. And Jesus gives us eternal life with God by cleaning this sin out of our heart. Now you know how to clean an Etch-a-Sketch. I can't clean it by wiping the top, but I can shake it. And when I shake that, it's almost like a mini miracle happens. Look! It's clean. Look at this. No more is that sin stain on my Etch-a-Sketch. It's a new picture. And on this, I could begin to draw anything I want. Now, I'm not a great artist, but once Jesus makes our hearts clean, he begins to etch his own image on our hearts. The beautiful story that he wrote for us before we ever were born. So that's what the first thing Jesus wants to make our hearts clean. The next thing that Jesus wants is really wonderful and it really surprised me. It says here in John 17 in verse 13, I speak in the world. He's going to give us a really important message and it's about what he wants us to have. You ready? I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. He's talking about us. He wants us to have joy. That means a deep happiness on the inside. That's what the bubbles are for. Bubbles, they're just happy, aren't they? Bubbles give us joy. You ready? Jesus wants his joy to bubble up inside us. Can you believe he didn't say he wanted us to be perfect or never crabby or that he wanted us to just read our Bibles all day long? He wants to give us his Holy Spirit and his Holy Spirit gives us joy. That's what Jesus wants. So Jesus wants to clean our hearts and he wants us to have his joy. The third thing that Jesus wants for us has to do with this ear protection right here. These are super fancy. If I put them on, I can't hear very much at all. It sounds like I'm in a tunnel, but there is a knob on the side. 
and I can turn this knob on and there's a battery in here. And what it does is it takes all the loud, awful sounds out and it only lets me hear the soft, important sounds. These are pretty fancy. And that's kind of what Jesus wants for us with the third thing. He wants us to know the truth and to listen to the right voices. Listen to John 17. Now we're here at verse 15. I do not ask you, Father, he's talking to God, to take them out of the world, but that you would keep them from the evil one. That is Satan, who is a liar, and he's always trying to speak his lies into our hearts. But Jesus says, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Jesus wants us to know the truth and to learn to listen for his voice because his voice is the truth. The puppets are going to help us learn a little lesson on this one. Flowers and birds, sunshine and diamonds, castles and queens. Um, and Trina? And birds. Trina? Are you speaking to me, minion? Minion? Whatever. Yeah, I'm speaking to you, Trina. That's Princess Trina to you. Um, I guess that would explain the dress and the tiara. I don't expect you to understand. To understand why you're dressed up like a princess singing songs about butterflies or something? Yeah, pretty much. Don't get that. Well, I'm naming myself Princess Trina. I am mistress of the realm. No one can call me any other name or laugh at me when I trip during basketball or any such thing. I do everything right. I am in charge of everything and everybody. Whoa, 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 whoa. Trina, try, try not to freak out right now. Silence, minion. Wait, wait a minute. Did you mention tripping during a basketball game? Look, it's that girl that ruined the basketball game. <laughs> yeah, did you see her fall? Talk about a yard sale. Her shoes went one way and the ball went another. What a klutz. What a loser. <laughs> I just can't stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Trina, I am so sorry. That's Princess Trina to you. Oh. Hey, 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 it, it's okay. No. I know it feels like becoming a new person would help, but it's not really possible. And I think that's not really what your problem is. What do you mean? You're listening to the wrong voices. Those kids have called you a klutz and a loser. Mm -hmm. But who cares what they say? You need to listen to the father. My father? Well, daddy named me Trina. I mean our heavenly father. Oh. Does he have a name for me? Yes, he does. In fact, the Bible says that when we get to heaven, we'll find out Jesus' special nickname for us. Wait, wait, he has a nickname for me? Yeah, Revelations 2 says that there is a white stone with our special name on it, oh. and we'll get it in heaven. Clutsy loser, Trina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Trina. Trina, I'm, I'm really sorry. Wait, just keep telling me about those names. Who cares about those kids? G yeah, that's right. Well, the Bible calls us names like beloved, and Jesus even calls us friend. Really? Wow. When you're telling me this, it makes those names everyone else is calling me seem really small. Kind of like they don't matter much at all. Not if God has a nickname for me. That's right, Princess Trina. It matters who you listen to, for sure. Hey, you don't have to call me princess. That was just me trying to fix the problem. <laughs> Great. It was really rather awkward. Now you can call me Beloved. Oh, Trina. 
Come on. Beloved, hmm, I like the sound of that. Thanks, puppets, that was great. Now for number four. Do you know what else Jesus wants? Jesus wants us in the world where it's dark. See how it's kind of dark here? Do you know why he wants us in the world? To shine. He wants us to shine for him. In John 17, 18, he says to his father, even as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world because the world is dark and he wants us to shine his light. He wants many people to know about him. He wants everyone to know that he is the way and the truth and the life. And so he sends us into the world to shine. All right, time for number five. And that's perfect. Five fingers for this glove. In John 17, verse 23, Jesus is praying to his father and he says, I in them, that's us, and you in me, that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them. Jesus wants to show the love of the Father to the world, and he does that when Jesus and us become one. Jesus wants to fill us up. Look at this glove. It really can't do anything. It couldn't even shake your hand because it's all limp. And that's kind of like us without Jesus in our spirit. But Jesus sent his Holy Spirit to fill us up. And look at that. It's like we're the glove and he's the life on the inside of it. Now I could shake your hand or help you or if you're in trouble or wave hello. This glove has life because of what's inside it. And Jesus wants to fill us up on the inside. And he doesn't want any part of our life left unfilled. Let's say if I take my pinky out of the glove and only four fingers are working, that poor little pinky is really sad. Jesus wants to fill our souls completely with his goodness and his life. Then when we reach out to others and help and love them, it's actually Jesus reaching through us. Isn't that amazing? I'm so excited to sing this song. It's one of our favorites. Did you ever talk to God above? Because talking to God is praying. And that's a way that we can grow close to him. I've got hand motion, so follow along. Yay, Shannon Kate, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> All right, let's sing. pretty easy. This one makes me want to cry because it's really beautiful. When I was reading this chapter and I was looking for the things that Jesus wanted, this is the last one. It's verse 24 in the chapter. And it took me by surprise. Sometimes I forget how much he really loves us. And this is illustrated by our crown. Now, boys, I know you don't want to wear a princess crown. It's the only kind I had. 
heaven, Jesus says that he has a crown of life that's waiting for us. So this is going to symbolize heaven for us. Do you know what Jesus wants? He says right here, Father, I desire that they, the children, the ones that belong to him, whom you've given me, may be with me where I am. Jesus wants us to be with him. He doesn't want to seem far away. He doesn't want us in this lost and broken world. He can't wait till we get to heaven. He said that it's precious to him when the saints come home. That's amazing. Can you believe it? Jesus wants us to be with him. And he is counting the days until we go to be with him. And as Christians, that is our deep and beloved hope. Not forever life on earth, but forever life with Jesus. And when he prayed, that's what he asked the Father for. So those are the six things that Jesus wants. Earlier in the book of John is the wonderful verse of John 3, 16. God so loved us that he sent his only son, Jesus, to take care of our sin problem, the only one who could make us clean. And all that Jesus asks of us is that we accept his forgiveness for our sins, that we say we're sorry, and that we believe in him. Jesus wants to erase the sin picture in your life and start writing his beautiful story. If you've never opened your heart and life to him, will you do that right now? Now is the time. Today is the day. That's when the amazing thing happens. He fills us. We're no longer empty and broken and useless. Jesus fills us. His voice of truth can ring in our ears and block out the voice of our enemy who tries to lie to us, our joy becomes so full. And sometimes that's hard to imagine, but Jesus can give a joy even in hard problems and difficult trials. And then we start loving others so much that we want to shine the light of Jesus everywhere we go. And then at the end of all things is our great promise, the hope of heaven. So if you don't know Jesus, if you're not his child yet, he didn't make it hard. He loves you so much. His word says it right here, how he prayed for you. He prayed that you would be his child, that you would accept the gift he's giving you of taking your sinful heart and giving you a clean one. And it just takes a prayer and a believing in him. And if you're already his child, then this is your chance for joy and shine and life and crowns. God is amazing. Let's follow him this week. God bless you guys. I love you.